किंवा आपला किती नंबर आहे गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स अँड वेलकम टू सेव्हन्टी थर्ड एपिसोड ऑफ टेकटॉक संडे टेकटॉक वी ऑलवेज हॅव फोर्ट नाईन्टी टेकटॉक अँड वी ऑल वेलकम यू टेक फोरम इज प्राऊड टू अनाउन्स दिस सेव्हन्टी थर्ड लेक्चर टुडे इज गोईंग टू बी अ व्हेरी इनोव्हेटिव्ह अँड डिफरंट टॉपिक फ्रॉम प्रसाद फडके हु इज अ इनोव्हेटर अँड यू ऑल अवेअर दॅट मॉस्किटो इज अ बिग बिग एनिमी ऑफ ऑल ऑफ अस and so far so many experiments and products have come in the market but nothing has uh, stopped because all the medicines or all the solutions they just repel the mosquitoes they don't kill but here is a innovator who has stopped the breeding cycle of mosquitoes it's very interesting and a very very innovative story he has recently appeared on shark tank of sony television and it was a very exciting dialogues with the people and with the investors apart from that he is struggling for last 5 years to place this product in the market of course he has done a very good turnover in last few years and it is now launching in a big way across the globe i'm sure this kind of solution breaking the cycle because corona if you remember we were all discussing about uh, the uh, this cycle breaking and we all followed it very thoroughly and successfully eradicated the corona so without spending much time i will request makaran vaidya to introduce our today's speaker mr prasad and uh, introduce the subject and then hand it over to prasad for his lecture prasad you have 40 minutes and we will keep few minutes for question and answer so let Uh, let uh, makaran why they uh, introduce you over to makaran uh, thank you rabade sir actually i don't know whether i am able to uh, read his bio data as such but i will start my uh, introduction of uh, mr prasad phadke with the different note i met him in the deccan queen okay and as i remember actually i will, i will not be able to talk much but i have i already shared lot of information with uh, rabade sir as well as with few friends and with uh, prasad also Uh, about the this uh, topic i mean i mean to say i remember when we were uh, when we met at uh, pune station to board the um, uh, deccan queen he bought one newspaper indian express i think so prasad yeah for indian express and in, in, in that there was one news about the uh, his uh, innovation and his uh, product and till that point i was not knowing what uh, prasad phadke is and what he is doing and all that and then i read it and then we had a little bit of chat in uh, bogi and then uh, um, he also shared uh, one uh, uh, i think there was one in ganpati fest period i think you had one uh, talk on dd dd news news dd news uh, that talk was very interesting talk in which i think the people were so eminent one was a from pest control i think so yeah. then one was for policy maker i think he was a policy maker in government uh, central government and the other one was a prasar bharti director so the panel was quite uh, um, quite eminent panel and in that i got enlightened about this product uh, much then i read about then we had a chat with prasar and then he diligently uh, gifted to me to of his product and then, <laughs> then i started using it immediately and then we met at uh, in social innovation uh, program mm-hmm. and uh, i am proud that he proud to announce that he he also uh, got a award first award in citizens uh, citizens uh, innovation na? social uh, social, social social ha social innovation in urban area he got a award in that program and I, then i introduced to mr robade and i thought of uh, introducing you mr prasad to the this forum because though it is not a, it is a completely engineering uh, 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 forum actually technological forum but i thought of um, introducing you also and your topic also to this so before uh, making much delay i am actually taking some time so that people will join uh, more people will join okay 
So this topic is very serious topic and very in interesting topic also. Quite controversial also. But as Prasad said in once uh, while we were discussing, uh, can I say Prasad? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Like you said one time that it is cruel, but it is not not so cruel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is cruel, but it is not so cruel. Yeah. Because it's a matter of survival of our human race and the yeah. the, the, um, the disease or whatever the consequences of the mosquito is not that uh, happy. They are not at all uh, tolerable and they are not at all good to have. So uh, that is a really concern. And that actually it has nothing to do with uh, cleanliness and um, um, I mean to say slum or anything like that. I hope so. This dengue, malaria and chikungunya, three things and Zika, you said. Those are all uh, related to the all the community, all the people, all over the globe. Mm -hmm. So before proceeding any further, I will, I will request Prasad to um, start his presentation. Thank you, Prasad. Okay. Uh, thank you, Rabde, sir. Thank you, uh, Vaidya, sir, for giving me an opportunity this morning to talk to your esteemed audience. My name is Prasad Padke and I am the founder and CEO of a company called as Eco Bio Traps. Uh, couple of things. Number one, there is going to be no PowerPoint. So that's, that's good. But I'm going to show you some things live and we are going to talk about it to make it more interactive. Uh, uh, number one. So there's no PowerPoint, nothing fancy stuff, right? Number two. Everything that we are going to talk today is going to be based on science. You know, it's going to be very, very science, scientific focus. You know, that's that's number two. And number three, largely we are going to talk about, uh, you know, I'm stealing the words from Dr. Narayan Murthy, is compassionate capitalism. You know, that's that's what we are talking about. So what's eco bio traps? You know, first we are an we are a for profit social enterprise. Uh, focused on protecting lives from dengue, malaria, chikungunya, Zika, Hathi Pao, you know, which is enthalitis. And, they, uh, and these are diseases which are caused due to mosquitoes, due to mosquitoes, right? Uh, that's what we do. Um, now, why, why did we pick up this problem? A uh, couple of facts. The most lethal predator on the planet is not the machine gun that was used in World War I. It is not the uh, atom bomb that was used in World War II. You know, the most lethal predator on the planet is itna sa chota sa paach mm ka machar, this tiny 5 mm mosquito, because it is responsible for the deaths of 1 million people every year in the world. 10 lakh people die because of dengue, malaria, chikungunya, zika, right? More than half of the world's population, 4 billion, is susceptible to all of these diseases, right? That makes it the most lethal predator on the planet. And, uh, you know, mosquitoes have killed more number of people in humanity's lifetime than the number of wars that we have fought, including the two that are that are currently ongoing. Okay, so that's why it makes the most lethal predator on the planet. Okay, and so what are we doing about them? You know, what are we doing to protect them, to protect ourselves? What are the mitigation that we are doing when we talk about dengue, malaria, and chikungunya or mosquitoes in general? Okay. Age old method, Baba Azam ke zamane ka, which is squatting. Literally kill them like this, right? All of us do that. Or we use these days, you have rackets, right? Uh, you know, in which you kill one by one by one. Or you have electric machines that come in that release carbon dioxide. And then that carbon dioxide attracts the mosquito and then it traps and kills it. So this is one by one by one. Excellent. Very good way of doing it. Right. Then we do fumigation and fogging. Right. That's what we do to, to tackle that problem, which essentially kills them, repels them, whatever. 
right? And then the other thing that we do is we put incense sticks. These days you have got Ayurvedic herbal incense sticks. You have vaporizers that you put in uh, electric sockets. And then you apply body and lotions, the cream on your body, right? Which is on, on your body. All these things essentially repel them away, which is, you know, you are shifting the problem. You are saying, don't bite me, bite the guy next door. I give a damn. That's that's what we have been doing, right? So either we kill them one by one, we do fogging, spraying, or we repel them away, which we shift the problem. Now, in spite of doing all of this, for last 126 years now, malaria was discovered in Sikandrabad, India, not other any other place, you know. Discovered by Sir Ronald Ross on August of 20th, for which he won a Nobel. So, Sir Ronald Ross discovered malaria for last 126 years. We are living now today in an era of artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning. Right? We have today come so far across that we are sending missions to Mars, Moon. You know, yeah, probably even Sun. Right? Being very successful out of that. And still... We have not been able to solve a problem of dengue, malaria or a tiny mosquito, right? There is, forget vaccine for dengue. There is no prescribed medication for dengue. There is no, nothing, none that exists, right? You have two things only. One is, you know, you either take the leaf of the papaya and then juice it out. And that's also one spoon. These days, people have converted that into the yellow color tablet. That's it. Or then, second is your platelet transfusion. You know, that thing. Or then the third thing is, 125 years today, with all you eminent engineers, technologists, all of us together sending all of these, we have to pray to God just to save a person from dengue. Really? 120? In this era? I mean, have you even thought about it seriously? It's ridiculous, right? So, um, so that's the that's the most important thing on why there is a why there is a problem, right? The problem still persists. And if we go now to the science of the mosquitoes on why does this why is, why are we not able to solve it? The reason we are not able to solve it is because we have not paid attention to the science. Ladies and gentlemen, science is only going to help us win this war with dengue, malaria and chicken boot. Nothing else. Science, right? And we are not paying attention to the science. That is why the problem persists. Okay, so what is science telling us? Science is telling us four things. Number one, only female mosquitoes bite. Male do not bite. Okay? Their lifespan is extremely short, 15 to 30 days for a female Male is about seven days, right? So human parlance, if if human average lifespan is 70 to 80 years, female mosquitoes only live for 15 to 30 days, okay? Number three, they breed only in water and no other place. Okay? They breed in water and no other place, right? And... When they breed, when she goes to lay eggs, when she goes to breed in water, she lays anywhere between 500 to 1000 eggs. Okay? Which basically is telling you that the next time a mosquito has bitten you, you know it's a female and you have donated blood to create 3 crore or 30 million mosquitoes in that one month life lifespan. So one bite results into those many number of mosquitoes, which is also telling you that the rate at which mosquitoes multiply will beat COVID hands down. Okay. And what did we learn from COVID? That if you have a massive force multiplier, the way to get out of that massive force multiplier is to break the chain. And what we are doing for mosquitoes currently is squatting them or killing them one by one by one. The adult, I don't know when we are going to kill three crore mosquitoes by one bite. Imagine the humanity and number of bites that we get. 
it's absurd, right? We are never going to reach the goal. Now you understand why we are not ever going to reach the goal because we are killing them one by one. Or second thing that we are doing is we are repelling them away, which is shifting the problem, not solving it. We just repel them away. Don't bite me, bite some other person and that's it. So we looked at the problem and said, okay, here's this holy grail. There's a huge opportunity for us to build a device, right? That mimics the breeding ground of the female mosquito and then, you know, cut the reproduction cycle, break the chain. The way we did that was put this device in place. You know, this is made out of by recycling corrugated boxes. So your number one waste generator today is the corrugated boxes, the Amazon boxes that come to your and my houses, Amazon, Flipkart, all of e-commerce, quick commerce, right? So you take that, you clean the plastic, remove all the dirt, turn it into a pulp, put it into a die and mold format like this, right? And then after you put it in a die and mold format like this, you we attach a sachet to the bottom. The sachet has two things. It has an attractant and a killing ingredient. And the device comes to you exactly like this. All you have to do is add water to this device. And now let's go back to the science and look at how this would work. So the science says only female mosquitoes bite. They breed only in water. Right? So you add water to this and you keep it indoor, outdoors, directly away from sunlight. The mosquitoes will get attracted to this. Right? Because of A, water, the science. Second, the attractant which is provided. So they'll come, they'll lay egg over here. And then the killing ingredient, the medicine that is there inside of the sachet will ensure that there are no adults that emerge out. So when she lays egg, those 500 into 500 into 500 force multiplier is stopped. You break that chain and that's it. You know, doesn't emit any fumes doesn't require any electricity, you know, after adding water will last for 30 days, four weeks. And one of this will cover an area of four weeks. As simple as that, you know, just add water to this device. Now what, you know, similar analogy, what our forest department does. If you have to catch a man-eater, tiger or a leopard, your option number one is take a tranquilizer gun and run behind it, which is dhundo dhundo re sajna kab milega malun. Or second is you put the bait inside of a cage, which is the food for him to draw the predator and then trap it. This is identically that. It mimics that breeding ground. And after mimics, mimicking that breeding ground, you know, it traps it and it kills its uh, reproduction. It kills its eggs, ensures that no adults uh, come out. The one question that I get often asked is there are so many water bodies. Why would it come to this water body versus any other water body? And the reason behind that is the attractant which is provided inside. Going back now to the science, the science says she only lives for 15 to 30 days, which basically means after she has dropped her eggs and since they are not mammals, after she has dropped the eggs, she does not see her eggs, her children, turn into an adult. She doesn't see them grow up. So when a mother knows that I'm not going to see my children grow up, largely as parents, we are going to think about three things. Roti, kapda and makan. The kapda and the makan is the container which can be available any place else also. But what is not available on the other place is the roti. This is the food that is provided which attracts her that she knows, oh, my children have food here, have water here, have everything that is required and hence I'll prefer this container, this and container with an attractant versus everything else. And that's how it works. The second question that I get most of the time asked about is, you know, how much time do we see? So this is not a repellent or an adult killer that you will start to see its immediate effect. You know, like you install this and in hours. So now let's understand back the cycle of mosquitoes. You know, after laying egg, after laying egg, till the time they turn into an adult is anywhere between four to seven days. Okay. 
So that cycle needs to break, right? So after installing the device, you will see the density re reducing slowly from day five and about day eight or 10, you will feel the maximum impact, right? So those are those are the two things on how this works. So what do we do with this product, right? We take, we, we, we build this product and then we decided to take it into the world's most difficult terrain for last two years now. This is third year in the row in a slum close to Mumbai, or probably the world knows how it is called as Dharavi. Now, Dharavi had huge epidemiological data incidences on dengue and malaria. Number two, the terrain is very difficult. You can't even open an umbrella and walk on inside of Dharavi, right? So we decided, okay, let's test the product straight in Dharavi and work with the Bombay Municipal, Mumbai Municipal Corporation and its incubator, Smile. Uh, who gladly supported us. Uh, and then we went inside of Dharavi, deployed these traps, uh, you know, uh, which were which are scientifically based. You know, our, uh, the other thing that I forgot to tell you when we talked about so much about the science is that out of the top, uh, you know, 50 vector entomologists or in layman's term, mosquito scientists, four of them serve on our board. Four of the people are who are validating this, including... Padmasri Aditya Prasad Dash, you know, Dr. Our very own Punekar, Dr. Subhash Salumke, the former Director General of Health Services for Government of India, Dr. Dhingra, the former DG for National Vector Control Board, Dr. Susanta Kumar Ghosh, who India thanks for his discovery of Gambusia Guppy fish uh, when he was the Director and Head Scientist G at ICMR and IMR. So, those with, with the scientists with a protocol built on WHO's longitudinal study, we put the device to test in Dharavi and the results were outstanding. This year now look at out of the 24 wards in Dharavi, it would always come in, you know, number one, number two, number three, top three of the charts. This year, it doesn't even appear in top 20 out of the 24. It's at 21, 22. So faggot, right? So because the drastic population density decreased, the disease incidence eventually went down. And now citizens of Dharavi are, are protected, right? So uh, after seeing that, we approached, uh, you know, Pest Corporation of India, Pest Control India, Rent to Kill PCI, the country's and the world's largest pest control provider to now take this product into the B2B segments, which is your hotels, hospitals, you know, schools, all of them, you know, manufacturing facilities, IT facilities to take them into the market and uh, and and basically have a have a commercial model, a commerce model for us. That's that's we are uh, selling right now, right? Uh, also, little couple of things on dengue, particularly dengue is a day biter. So your protection of, you know, doing disease protection starts to get limited, right? Because you have to have massive outdoor uh, protection, right? You can't wear bed nets. You can't apply those, uh, you know, uh, repellents and, you know, creams on your body and be moving out during your daily life, right? It's, it's, it's not as easy as wearing a mask and moving it, right? So it's, 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 it becomes incredibly hard because dengue is a, is a day biter. Also, uh, if you have 100 people in a room and you add pregnant women and children, the female mosquito will first bite pregnant women and children. And the science behind that is that pregnant women and children exhale 20 to 30 percent more carbon dioxide and their body temperatures are 1 to 2 degree Fahrenheit more, which makes them a delicious meal. Sorry for using this words, but that's the you know, that's the most prudent uh, predator that the mosquito will attack and bite. Now, worst, after it has bitten you, a pregnant woman, it transforms that into the fetus, resulting into stillbirth, infant mortality, anemia, all of those proven by Government of India's Potion 1 and Potion 2.0 Abhyan's fact finding. And so it's, it's very, very little, right? And the third, though, advantage for us, and I'm saying it's an advantage because dengue only travels 100 to 200 meters, okay, which means it's not too big and it's neither too small, okay. 
And if you have multiple of these devices installed, okay, now there's another notorious thing about dengue, okay? Uh, and it's the most smartest kid that, you know, we always had this student when we were growing up in the school who was the most notorious character, you know, the most mischief monger, but at the, at the same point of time was the most brilliant student, right? So that's dengue for us in the in the mosquito parlance, right? Aedes species, right? So they do not get satisfied by biting one person, minimum four to maximum 18. That's why dengue transmission spreads so rapidly, right? That's just one reason. Now here's the second and the most deadliest reason. When she bites you, she'll bite minimum four people or maximum 18 people. Second, when she lays eggs on in one container, although she travels only at 200 meters, she will not lay eggs, all of her eggs in one container. She will drop 50, 100 here, 100, 200 there, and so on and so forth, and then move, move ahead, right? So when you have in a 200 meters radius, products like these installed, you can make your premise, your zone, as a dengue mosquito free premise. So that particular premise, you can have a dengue bite four kilometers away, but not in that minimum 200 meter of premise. And we can guarantee a scientific way of saying it's a dengue mosquito free premise. You will not have dengue incidence in that zone as long as you are sustainably using, using this product, right? So, uh, and then, you know, we did two case studies, uh, you know, on, on particularly dengue outbreak about three months back, one in Bangalore with our armed forces establishment, uh, you know, I obviously can't name because of confidential reasons, which organization, but they had about 50 dengue cases with our armed forces officers. And those 50 cases in manner of one month came down to three now. Right. Similarly, there was an incident that happened. Now, this name I can definitely take is Kalyan Dombivli Municipal Corporation. There is this big construction site of Runwal over there. And there were another 40, 38, 40 cases or so. And within a month, we got them down to two. So it's real meaningful impact built on science, validated by scientists and a very frugal way of attacking the stores and doing things differently and not that we have been doing for 125 years and today's era of artificial intelligence miserably failing at that. Yeah. The other thing that I get asked on quite often um, and, you know, a lot on YouTube forums, a lot of comments that what we are trying to do is we are trying to eradicate mosquitoes, which is not good. And, you know, all of these people hound me. So first of all, scientifically, okay, scientifically, let's understand this. Eradication, eradication of mosquitoes is not possible, will not ever happen, okay? And the, and the reason behind that is, as long as there is water on the planet, mosquitoes are going to breed. And if they are going to breed, we are going to bleed. So in, if you have to eradicate a species out of the planet, we have to get out water out of the equation. Okay. And, you know, while Mr. Gadkari can have alternative to fossil fuel with the Toyota announcement that he has done, but with this wonderful construction that he has been doing in the country, ask him that, you know, there will be no water. He can use plastic to making roads, but no water. Not possible, right? There's no life without water. So, and dengue is everywhere. It now is in every single continent except Antarctica. Every single country, it's on foot foot for foothills of Himalayas, right? And and that's what it is. You know, uh, you know, it's spread every single place as of now as we speak. So, eradication of mosquitoes is not possible. Also, note there are thirty five hundred species of mosquitoes. Okay, 3,500. Out of which only a dozen full are lethal. The balance are nuisance. You know, uh, 
don't mind me, but you know, like my wife sometimes thinks that you know I'm a new Satya. She has to live with it. It's her choice. It's our choice. You know, 20 years yeah, take care. Jan nahi ja hai. It's not harmful, right? So the other species are not. The ones that are lethal are mostly clean water, stagnant, clean, stagnant water mosquitoes. That's what we are trying to do with the device. Okay. Uh, the reason there is diseases is because of clean, stagnant water. Dharavi's problem is not the dirty, polluted, mithi river that is flowing in there. No. You know, disease mosquitoes do not breed in polluted waters. They breed in clean waters. You know, malaria, Stephen Sai, Dengue, Zika, Chikungunya, which is on Aedes aegypti or Aedes albopetus or any of the Aedes family, all are clean, stagnant water breeders, right? And what we are targeting is we are targeting those clean, stagnant water breeders and not the humanity of the mosquito population, which in any case, even if we go to target, is not going to happen. But we are intentionally focused on providing citizens in the world protecting lives from dengue, malaria, chikungunya, disease mosquitoes and, and you know, not worry so much about the ones that do not cause the disease, right? Uh, and that's the other thing that I get hounded on a long time that you are not doing, sir, you know, how are, and we are nobody as a company to eradicate one species on the planet. I mean, who are we? No way. And nobody can do it. The only person that can do it is mother nature who if decides that female will not be able to breed okay then it's a different change or it says that mosquitoes tomorrow will not breed on water and they will bleed on yeah whatever else you know yeah alcohol for all of the absurd things right yeah if that happens we'll have mosquitoes out of the equation otherwise this is a problem that we'll have to live through um, all our life you know, we have to live with it. We can't leave it. We can't leave that problem. And hence, disease prevention and disease control uh, happens to be an imperative tool in all vector management programs or that should be our strategy. But attacking the root cause because, you know, when they do not breed in water and we do fumigation and fogging on plants and bushes and shrubs without even understanding whether we are impacting the male or the female, how can you, dis you know, disguise. It's very difficult for a naked eye to disguise whether you know, it's a male or a female. Doing all of these measures that we have been doing, which is making them run away or squatting them, killing them one by one when you have a massive force multiplier is going to be futile. It's just not going to work. right? And time and again, we are doing the same thing. And Dengue has now four variants. The fifth variant is almost all. Then five is getting you know certified by WHO. Uh, in next couple of months, which was discovered in Indonesia, you need to have vaccines for different for all of these. You know, we don't even have one, you know, a vaccine for it. one of them. We're struggling with it until the time we have that. Uh, and I'll not get into the pros and cons of the vaccine. That's a different subject. But, you know, our only remedy right now is to, like we did in COVID, break the transmission cycle, break the chain by using devices like that. With that, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I had to say uh, this morning and I'm happy to take any questions. And once again, Rabde sir and Vaidya sir, thank you so much for giving me an opportunity. Hello, now the session is open for the question and answer. I request all the members to ask any query or any question to Prasad if they wish to. No. I think first identify your name and then fire the question. I have one that I can see on the chat box. If uh, Rabde sir, Vaidya sir, if you are okay for me to kind of read it out and then answer it, is that okay? Yeah, okay, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so that's one from Mr. Mehta which says that is only this bucket must or any bucket plus this sachet is must and any immediate or long-term provision, but new mosquito will come. Okay, he said he's got the answer uh, and he's asking about the uh, about the price. So, you know, uh, uh, what this is called, so the pregnancy position of the mosquitoes is called as OV position. Okay, 
uh, I mean, the labor pain, right? It will only go to breed in the water when, like a female experiences labor pain, that's where the mosquitoes goes into breeding of the water. Also, largely, one thing on science that I didn't talk about is that, and it's a an funny anecdotal stuff, that mosquitoes do only three things in life. Only three things, huh? no fourth thing, only three things. One, they mate. Second, they suck blood. And third, they breed. That's it. Rinse, repeat. You know, luckily Zuckerberg hasn't done a Facebook or an Instagram for them to do anything. Or, you know, nobody posts. Vaidya sir doesn't post jobs on LinkedIn for them to go find jobs. Okay, so none of that is happening till the time you guys do some intervention that, you know, we make mosquitoes entertain not to bite, but to watch Netflix and binge watch it. We are safe. So till the time that doesn't happen, they do these three things. You know, only 15 days for the female and seven seven days for the male. Uh, that's what they do, right? So 25 years back, WHO got this thing called as, uh, you know, OV traps, which was essentially made out of plastic. And it's not so much about plastic and stuff like that, okay? Because that's a long-term use plastic. You know, you'll never have a problem with your dustbin because you'll use dustbin for 10, 20 years, right? You use our bucket for, you know, water. So all of that, right? It's not single use. It's multi, multi several years. So that's still fine, you know? Uh, we'll debate on that later, but plastic wasn't the problem. The problem was the killing ingredient inside of this, the medicine or whatever is that action. The killing action, whether it's a medicine or in our case, where we are using non-medicine, pure green solution, it's basically surface tension that we have now launched the product with in its version 2 avatar. Uh, but anything that you do now has limited efficacy of action, you know, one month, 15 days, seven days, right? So imagine you use a plastic instead of this, right? You add the attractant, you add the killing ingredient, and after one month, you will have to go and change this sachet, okay? Now, that is, is extremely hard. What if you miss one? So, let's take a look at our vaporizer that we use, right? We put a vaporizer in the socket, okay? After one month, the liquid inside of it runs away because you have used it, right? Now, even if you don't use it, it will not cause any harm, you know? It will not spread anything. It will not be the victim will never be a perpetrator, right? If you know what I mean, right? It will not cause any harm. Yeah, you will, mosquitoes bite will keep happening to you and all of that. But the device itself will not cause any harm. Now, if you fail to recharge this sachet inside of that plastic container, assuming this was a plastic container, if you fail to recharge, notice it will now become a breeding ground. And then that breeding ground is 500 into 500, that one byte into three crore multiplier, which means you are actually taking lives of people rather than protecting lives. And that is why public health and government organizations will never approve anything that is made out of plastic. What they were always looking at, a device that will auto disintegrate after a month so that then it becomes doesn't become a breeding ground. After one month, the water inside of this bucket slowly starts to leak out. It becomes soggy because there is no water as they have, you know, the saying in Hindi, na bajega bas, na bajegi basri, right? So if there is no water, there is no retention, there is no risk of it being a breeding ground. And even if you forget to recharge, you don't need to worry. You don't need to worry about uh, 30 days. Uh, yeah, there's another question that I can see uh, which comes up, you know, does it, oh no, this has, it has zero insecticide and pesticides. Zero. You know, the way we do the killing action is basically by using a surfactant. Anybody of you in organic chemistry know that. This is the same thing. So, you know, it comes in cosmetics. Imagine you leave your, you know, uh, the lipstick that, uh, that ladies, girls, women use, right? If you leave it open, you know, because of moisture, it should start immediately to tuck down. What doesn't happen is because there is silicon inside which ensures that the oxygen supply inside is cut. Similarly, the killing mechanism that we use inside uh, has, has now in its version 2 avatar surface tension silicon molecule includes. So what it does is it forms a thin coat of 
which is not visible to naked eye on the surface of the water. So after breeding, the eggs and the larva that emerge out do not get oxygen and they die by suffocation. The other beautiful part of not using an insecticide and pesticide, as we all know with humans and so with pests, you know, you develop resistance to all of these eventually, right? However, the mechanism that I told you is a mechanical action. You know, I can take a vaccine, but if Mr. Vaidya fires a bullet at me, I'm going to be dead unless otherwise I don't have a body armor. That vaccine is not, I can't, you know, there's this English saying, you don't have, you know, dying by a thousand cuts, right? So you don't, you, if you don't have a body armor, your vaccine is not going to prevent you by the knife cut. It's not just not going to work. Similarly, because that's a mechanical action. Similarly, this is a mechanical action. So tomorrow, they will never ever develop a resistance. And obviously, you get an insecticide, pesticide uh, pre, uh, pre solution. In terms of the other question that Sudhirji has asked, uh, which how do you dispose this off? So you just uh, uh, dispose this off as um, a dry waste. Uh, you know, in your garbage recycling stuff. And then it will go to the same Kabadi Wala, the same Bhangar Wala, with whom we will take it back. Also notice, as I said to you, right, this is made by recycling corrugated boxes. So waste to protecting lives, right? The reason IT companies start are looking at us very aggressively is because they are generating a lot of waste by doing this corrugated boxes. And from their waste, now they are able to protect their employees, right? A persistent system, uh, Infosys campus now becomes dengue mosquito free. Tomorrow our colleges, which are all, you know, because dengue is a day biter, become a dengue mosquito free premise in a very, very scientific uh, way. You know, uh, Gokhale ma'am is asking, where do I get um, uh, uh, information of all of this? It's on our website, ma'am ecobiotraps.com or even if you google us you'll find a lot of my interviews uh, you'll find my Pune Innovation uh, Society uh, lecture that I did which won us an award at Dr. Marshall Kulser's National Conference on Social Innovation event where I met Rabde sir uh, uh, over there for the first time so you'll find a bunch of uh, uh, documents um, over there uh, of course, the pricing and the product is available on Amazon. Uh, if you are an institutional person looking at for your hotel, hospital, restaurant, Pest Control India, Rent to Kill, PCI, the country and the world's largest, uh, you know, 1,000 locations, 300 districts, 22 states, and 5,500 army is ready to deploy this product to make your commercial premise a uh, uh, dengue mosquito free um yeah there are uh there are various uh you know dr mehta says is nafta attracts so sir uh you know you have to look at whom are you attracting the mosquito but in what stage of the mosquito okay uh like i said we have electric killers today that emit carbon dioxide and attract the adult but by attracting the adult you are just killing the adult one by one by one एक एक करके कब तक मारेंगे एक से 25 साल से दो ही तो चीजें कर रहे हैं एक एक करके मार रहे हैं या उनको भगा रहे और उसी की वजह से समस्या वही के वही है the problem is 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 like that is because we are not focusing on the root so the naphtha attractant is good to the adult but not to the female when she is breeding to kill her 500 into 500 into 500 cycle because with naphtha what you are doing is you are imitating her to become the, you know, uh, the human host and then trapping it. But if that escapes, then you still have the 500 force multiplier that will be there. I hope, uh, Mr. Mehta, your all questions were answered. Um, are there any more questions? I think Mehta is happy. So, any more questions, please? Yeah, I can ask one. Uh, how the Prasad, how uh, you can selectively eliminate the breed? 
uh, actually, you know, it's it's a very interesting, and you can we could if we are intentional about it, we can very uh, very easily do it. Now, for example, let's look at malaria. Okay, uh, you know, there are largely three cities only in urban areas where there is malaria. Uh, you know, which is Mumbai, Kolkata, and Chennai. Only three cities. Otherwise, malaria is a rural phenomenon. As of now, it's a rural phenomenon. You go into the rural side, you'll find malaria there more. Dengue, on the contrary, is everywhere. I mean, earlier it was an urban disease, but now it's gone into rural disease also, right? Uh, and both have different habitats of breeding, although water, but somebody prefers, you know, clean running water, stagnant running, stagnant pool, mm. rice paddy fields and so on and so yeah. forth. So if we are intentional, uh, you know, the health program of India uh, you know, our public health can take the intervention and device and be very selective about targeting which species because, you know, Anopheles is, uh, malaria's urban version is called as Anopheles stephensi, whose behavior pattern, even though it breeds in water, is very, very different than the rural version of malaria. So there are these nuisances which can be tackled through effective vector control by public health authorities. It's not a citizen job. Uh, you know, it. I mean, to get to this depth is not a citizen job. We can stay protected by using it ourselves, but... Prasad, you have hit actually various uh, words and phrases in all, all your talks. And one Mr. Rahul, Mar Dr. Rahul Marathe, our friend, Robert Esser and myself, he works in the field of uh, his insects. And he uh, means, uh, used their uh, virtue of insects in some good work. So in that he actually used this work uh, word just now you have uh, said about that mosquitoes the behavior uh, he ident means uh, insects behavior he identifies and he then uses that behavior to uh, detect something and you are saying the same thing actually oh, and they are very smart uh, like us mm -hmm. in humans they evolve uh, mm -hmm. like we talk about these generations right today Gen Z then millennials and Gen Y Gen X whatever right. Oh, mosquitoes have come. So, how did Arbo, why, why, you know, where, I mean, why do we have mosquitoes at the foothills of Himalayas? Why is dengue knocking at the door of France, you know, or in Europe, right? Who would imagine it, right? That's the big, that, and the reason behind that is I am a, I'm infected with dengue by the time I come to know because of the international travel and coupled with climate change. Huh? I mean, you know, we all know they like hot, humid, all of those weathers. So climate change is going to play, a, it's going to, the situation is going to get worse with this earth. Mm -hmm. If not better, it's going to get worse with climate change and their behavioral, uh, the yeah. behavioral science of mosquitoes is so very interesting. You know, that's an entomology conversation that probably yeah. Mr. Marathi can do very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not I asked him to actually uh, join this meeting, but he has not joined. But I, we can discuss Three of us all it's, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting yeah. thing on how they are changing their yeah, patterns. Behavior, and behavior. yeah, and and climate change is supplementing, actually accelerating it, hmm. it's accelerating it big time. And we have learned about this contagious diseases that is spread by the uh, various things in the childhood. Because, I think in the fourth standard. Yeah, yeah. Because but, by the time you come to know dengue or malaria, na, your day four, day five happens. So you have moved from a Bombay to an Uttar Pradesh or from an Lucknow to a Kolkata and it's over, right? I mean, look at those uh, scenarios when you have a dengue or a malaria outbreak in the hospital, they are putting bed nets to cover people because there you don't want the victim to be the perpetrator. Na? There are normal mosquitoes, they'll come and bite, get infected and, and go all of that. So that's where... That's where they no, should... What I mean to say is that uh, mosquito biting is everywhere in the forest or when you do training oh, yeah. in nature. But the mosquito which carries the dengue virus is actually a problem. And it spreads by biting in 18 places or 4 to 18 places. I think so. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no. So minimum number of people. Dengue is dangerous out of all of them. Minimum 4, maximum 18 to bite. And also when it breeds, like mother, she doesn't lay. She's very smart. She says, oh, I, we have this English saying, right? Do not put your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. She doesn't put all her eggs <laughs> literally in one basket. She will look at different water bodies to breed. That's a dengue behavior, you know, mm -hmm. very different from a malaria behavior 
and other species behavior you know very very different uh, yeah. prasad can you share some uh, your experiences in elite locations as well as in dhara means both are contrast actually uh, i'll give you classic contrast right uh, you know uh, obviously uh, you know antelia will not second this but mm. you know you, we all know where antelia is right mm. pedder road in mumbai right one of the most we know who lives there we know that entire locality we know malbar hill right or uh, the species of dengue and malaria is the same there versus what is there in dharavi because because it is our ability to store water it's not because of whom we are with a social strata mm -hmm. intentionally or unintentionally water will never be available to 20, up to us 24 by 7 so we store it the guys in dharavi store it in those uh, you know uh, blue color containers for their living right uh in urban area we store it intentionally and unint you know we have simple flower pots and below that we put a plate and we over pour the water sometimes and it becomes stagnant over there that the smallest thing which is done unintentionally but becomes a breeding ground that's why you have municipal corporation guys will come and say to you oh is there you know un unintentionally you will keep a tire which is open there mm -hmm. is one drop of rain that will come over there and you know all they need water is this much ah they the if you, if you see our drinking water our mineral water cap or you know your pepsi coke that cap this much like 5 ml 10 ml that is the water that they need to breed they don't need 10 liters and 5 liters of water to breed this much is sufficient for the mosquito to breed and then you know whether you are in an urban area or rural area or you know whether you are in a high rise you know in mumbai's plush community or in pune's plush community or living in slums you know there is going to be a problem and here's the harder problem right uh, you know like in dharavi you have this profession called as kumbhar wada right which is pottery making pottery making now very interestingly needs three things making of pottery needs three things mud water and furnace to heat so now you will see if the furnace is running 3 days a week 8 10 hours then wo dhue ke wajah se machhar hone nahi chahiye oh but the reason is they get more irritated by that just you know fog they hide themselves and then you know when they when the fog recedes they come out more angrily to bite you second you can't ask a profession a artisan profession like kumbhar or pottery guys and several others construction to say don't use water don't store water are wo pani kaise nahi jama karega uska pet uske upar hai its livelihood is dependent on that how will you not store water storing or not storing water is not is a is a is a convenient way to escape the problem and say mat karo it's not going to happen you know ever so you know you got to figure ways out of of doing that irrespective you know a dengue i mean yes chopra right yes g are you know celebrated film maker yeah he uh he his death was because of dengue so you know what street are you are where you are where you travel what doesn't matter you know if it's going to hit you it's going to hit you you know uh, prasad can you share mm -hmm. some of your uh, international and national experiences about this issue um Means uh, you said you you said you have got fifty patents in the. Oh uh, no! So yeah, the uh, the different countries have different problems, right? Africa is a very different problem uh, to cater to Malaysia. If you look at it, you know everything is high rise. Their slums are also in high rise, right? Versus spreading flatly out. If you look at North American continent, you know we all know in Americas, in all of us have relatives or have visited Americas. It's all a flat structure, right? Everything is not so much vertical. and so you know if, if you are flatter in structure that's very easier to control than something which is vertical in structure now on the contrary people you know they have also developed uh, they are uh, you know uh, flying distance height you know in a boriv in borivli on the 21st floor of a hill you will still find mosquito breeding so they have adapted it to to it so that becomes it very very hard to go way up than uh, the way the way flag uh, in there and different species are there right you know you don't have so much of a you know you west nile is pretty much in in uh, in north america if you go that's the number one disease there um, which is caused by culex kind of a species uh, right 
for us we don't really have west nile over here for us here in india dengue malaria chikungunya and are prominent chikungunya and zika are coming up you know dengue chikungunya and zika are caused by the same species of the mosquito if you will no what i mean to say is what uh, your uh, interaction with who as well the experts and uh, the tackling the problem over there apart from dharavi and no and malaysia and... malaysia is super interested i mean we'll have malaysia announcement i guess by may the product should be adopted by the malaysian government by may we are hitting at the doors of nepal uh, you know who is, is seriously interested this is last week i was in icmr uh, the same uh, set of team who developed vaccine for uh, us uh, you know the same authorities uh, you know were there in the room and they were also pretty they're like oh this is substantial scientific data now for us to kind of look at it at a very different angle in terms of as a model of intervention so the more we are going international um, and taking this product the more we are seeing you know brazil's uh, you know adil tells me brazil is um, is getting into traction a big time yeah so there there a lot of international zambia uh, you know should also see the day of the light by end of the year relations and second thing was uh, this uh, this should be uh, means as we were discussing this should be like a social movement instead of just buying one container one uh, this container and then putting it at the place oh so, yeah somebody saying something. yeah somebody saying something uh makram we will take a last question now yeah. oh but you are right it has to be a big social see na uh, you know it's a war that against dengue malaria now you guys understand why it's a serious war why it's going to get worse and science is only going to help us win this war you know without science we are not going to help us win this war and you know as i call it it's compassionate there is capitalism all about it we are a for profit social enterprise but there is a compassion to the capitalism of protecting lives of our fellow citizens that's where the social cause comes in where all of us as individuals in our capacity do our two bit to whatever we can do to make sure we are protected and dengue is going to get worse malaria can still be under control we have vaccinations to a larger extent they will keep developing there is line of sight dengue is going to be worse worse with how it spreads its behavior it being a day biter you know number of people it bites uh, and it being more susceptible to the urban areas where 70% now of our population lives or will live eventually is going to be a big big thing you know dengue is one thing that i would worry about more out of all of these diseases thank you prashad before before rabdev yeah. uh, finishes the talk i wish to thank you for uh, having this talk uh, on my request and we are uh, and as well as i will uh, uh, thanks uh, thank all the members who have joined now rabade please continue yeah yeah i thanks makran thanks prasad for this wonderful presentation we really appreciate your efforts and we on behalf of tech forum wishing you all the best and lot of success in this venture because this product is going to be an international one and it's really amazing efforts we should say and this is one example you have given how to attack on the root cause of the problem because nobody has done so far everybody was uh, making the uh, solutions which can repel the mosquitoes but you have uh, we have break we have broken the cycle breeding cycle that's wonderful and i think uh, it's going to click the worldwide we wish you all the best friends uh, next tech talk is on csr and social stock exchange it will be on 10th of march by mr anil dhaneshwar those who are looking out for funding for their social activities definitely will learn a lot of things uh, the social stock exchange is a new concept and really going to benefit most of the social organizations who are registered under ngo so don't miss this very interesting talk i declare today's program is over once again we thank prasad for his wonderful wonderful presentation uh, we have recorded uh, recorded this topic and it will be circulated in different groups i'm sure it will reach to more than 1000 people and they will know and understand uh, the implications of this innovation thanks a lot we declare the program is over we will meet on 10th march 
10 o'clock in the morning. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.